Jason, welcome to the cave. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Exciting times, man. Uh, April 6th, right around the corner. We're waiting for uh, Greece, Rise of the Pink Ladies. Uh, we what's, are. What's, going, what's going through your head right now? Because uh, with that first day when that trailer dropped, uh, people were the fan base from the old movies and everything. They're, they're ready for this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been a little minute. We finished filming uh, around mid-August last year. So we've been sitting on it. We've been sitting on the music. And I think it's just mostly excitement. I think we have something special um, that we really put our hearts and souls into for the for the fan base and hopefully for more fans that'll join the fan base. And I'm just excited to see what people think about it and and to hear what they what they take away from it. We're gonna jump more into uh, to the show in a little bit, but I was trying to do some research on you, man. I, I noticed you've done a little bit of everything: singing, acting, songwriting. What's left, man? What's left on that bucket list? Um, uh, I really want to write a script, man. To be honest, um, I've been working on a few things, fleshing out a few ideas. I the things you listed are the things that I primarily do, and of course, want to continue to invest in those in the future. But to add to the list, I definitely. If only for the experience of, you know what I'm saying? I think you learn so much by investing in the different parts of the arts that we do. Um, And so I think even just to learn the lessons that are there for me from writing something or directing something, I definitely want to want to give it a shot at some point. Well, uh, what made you get into this industry? What made you fall in love with it? Uh, Okay. When I was, when I was a, a freshman in high school, I was actually going to quit acting slash singing and just play basketball. I played basketball for 10 years growing up. Um, And the community theater I did announced that they were doing Les Mis. And I I had already told my mom I was going to quit. And my mom essentially was like, I love that show. You got to do one more. (laughs) And I was like, no, you know, I'm going to quit. I've already made my decision. She was like, I'm your mother. Um, You must listen to me. (laughs) So I, so of course I did it. I had no choice. And within the process of that show, I met my future mentor acting coach and now one of my best friends and a bunch of other actors who ended up going into the industry. And, and it was just an experience where you got to see the impact the arts could have on people. Yeah. Um, because the show Les Mis is a very emotional show and people would come up to us afterwards and it's like a high school, you know, it's like a high school group, but people would come up to us afterwards and tell us what it meant to them and in that moment, I was like, oh, OK, this this thing that I'm doing is not just for fun. It like really, truly can mean something to the world. Mm. And if I do it right, it can mean something to the people around me. Um, and so that's where I kind of fell in love with it. And from that point, I three or 180 from not wanting to act at all anymore to wanting to do it for the rest of my life, which my wow. mom, who's an accountant, was not super <laughs> thrilled about at the time. <laughs> she jumped on board a few years later. Um but yeah, I think it was just the impact and like the mm. the ability to give people a night out that they don't even they're not thinking about the rest of their stuff in their life or a night on the couch. Right. So you mentioned the big 180. Now the big question is now, did you quit basketball after that? Or would you stick with that? I did too? not. I did not. I played for another like three years um okay. until the end of my high school career. At that point, at a freshman year, I was kind of thinking that maybe I would try to play in college D3 or D2 or something like that. Um, so I didn't play in college, but I do play all the time still. I go play pickup at LA Fitness wherever I am. And um, it's a good time. I get a little competitive with it. There's some good players out there and I love playing. So yeah, it's, it's awesome. so filled. It's one of those yeah. extra things you have to keep on the side. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the big um, theater and then TV and act and everything, what do you enjoy more, the theater part? Or do you, do, now that you've got your hands on TV, you want more of that that's difficult i think theater was my first love that's the thing i did growing up um and the thing that introduced me to to the art of acting and so there it'll always hold a special place in my heart i'm working on a theater project right now as well um and it's nice after doing tv stuff to come back to it and get to interact with the live audience again i think for me for where i'm at TV definitely like has my attention, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, after doing Grease and a, and a few other things, I think I'm just so interested in it. I've done a little bit less of it in my lifespan and the intricacies of it. And I'm somebody who just, I like to to learn and, and grow yeah. and stuff like that. And so I think I see all these ways that I can do that in the TV realm. And also I think 
TV allows you to be like the rawest of acting that you can give. Yeah. Um, although Greece is very stylized, so, so it's a little yeah. bit different. But um, it allows you to be raw, and I think that's that's one thing that I'm really looking forward to and continuing TV. Mm. What's more stressful now, uh, theater, like getting ready to prepare for that, or TV? Mm. It's a different. It's a different stress. I think they're both stressful. Yeah. But for theater you get a lot of preparation to do the same thing over and over again. So the live audience is a little more stressful because on TV, there's a bunch of people on set, but they're all people who are like on your team and theater. You have all these, what I kind of say is just like shadows. Cause when you're looking out in the audience, the lights in your eyes, all you can kind of see is like shapes. <laughs> and, uh, and of course in a long run, you're a lot of times I don't even know anybody in the audience or anything like that. Um, so that is scary, but the preparation allows it to be a little less stressful for me, to mm. be honest, because I know what I'm doing. I know the exact words I have to say every night, the exact movements I have to do every night. And of course, you want to live within it and give it some breath within it. But I think that preparation is is easier for me. And then TV, you're, it's more about the spontaneity, I think. You know, you okay. kind of want to get it in the first how many ever takes that's when it when the best take usually comes and the spontaneity and allowing yourself to kind of sit in that nervous energy that I think gives you life mm. is a little is a little more nerve-wracking for me that's awesome so anyway let's jump right now into uh the project everybody's been waiting for uh Greece mm. Rise of the Pink Ladies April 6 Paramount Plus you said you're very excited about this and everything I, I need to know first when you first got the role for this did you feel any pressure going like we've had the movies you know Grease 1 Grease 2 do you feel pressure now trying to live up to this for this series is there yeah any pressure? I think there's there was a little bit before I came to set and then once I got to set and met with our showrunner Annabelle and our executive director Alethea and and the rest of the team it was just very clear the care that was taken or that this project was was taken with um okay. and you know i think when you're doing something that is that has a root a history a, a movie that that it's based off of but it's its own thing yeah. you're kind of trying to find that happy medium of doing justice to to the film and giving people the homages and the the winks here and there but also you know making it its own thing and and that that beautiful meet between the two is i think where the show lands um and i think that c came from a lot of beautiful preparation and respect for the movie the showrunner and the, and the executive director they love the movie and um so there's so many winks and nods within it while it it being its completely own thing um mm -hmm. and so i think once i heard that and had those conversations the pressure was kind of relieved because i was like i am in good hands and they're they're gonna guide me to to the right thing i think yeah right when you uh, when you first auditioned for this did you have any idea that this is what it's for or was it like a blank title and everything because sometimes they hide these from you just so you have no idea what you're auditioning for i did i did know what it was for okay actually. and that was the first option was the grease rise of the pink ladies i didn't know like really much about the character or the plot lines but knew the okay. knew the project so we see you as buddy uh tell us what about the audition when you first auditioned for that how do you prepare for this role yeah absolutely um so i auditioned i was still in college when i was auditioned i was at carnegie mellon in the okay. act um so i was going to class during the day and then filming tapes for whatever came up at night and when this audition tape came through i was you know i was reading it i knew greece i'm I, i'm a musical theater major i lived with two like film acting majors and they and they were, I had a, one of my roommates looked at the tape and he was reading it with me, just going over the lines. And, and he was like, bro, I think, th I think this is kind of brilliant. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, not a musical theater person at all. Grease was not his favorite movie. He's a very like film bro type person. Yeah. And, and he was like, I think this is brilliant. He's like, I'm not, I'm not usually into mus musicals, but, but I think this is going to be really cool. And I was like, okay. Um, so I really put, put myself into it. And then from there I had a call back had chemistry reads, had to record some of Justin Tranter's music um, to send in a tape of that, had to record a dance. Sorry about the ding. Sorry. <laughs> um, had to record a dance. Uh, 
yeah, it was a long, grueling process, but mm. well worth it. Right, right. What was the description we given for Buddy? Um, Buddy is the soch of the show. So there's the the greasers, the T-birds, the, yeah. the, and, and then there's the soches who are the the wealthy kids, their parents. My dad in the show, for instance, is like a real estate owner, um, which was big in the 50s. And people made a lot of money off of that. And so they're rich. They, you know, wear the nicer preppier clothes. Buddy is the quarterback, the golden boy, the the, the current class president. Um, and so it was that, but with a beautiful heart is I think the important thing is, is the socials are kind of like the antithesis to the greasers a little bit, but Buddy is this this person who has a beautiful heart. So it was how I remember it being described. Yeah. I watched uh, the first two episodes. I was given screeners because uh, the junket is also coming up too. And uh, yeah, yeah. so I watched it, you know, like I said, my wife's a big fan of Grease. So we watched it and uh, we wa- I paid a close attention to your character also. Do you think he has got a little bad side to him also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, I think for me where I register it more is that he's just a little uneducated. Like mm. he, I think he has this beautiful heart but I don't think he understands that his world is different from other people's worlds, if that makes sense. Like yeah. the, way, the family he was born into, the opportunities he's been given, just the fact that he's a white man in the 50s, I think. I don't think at the beginning of the series, in the first two episodes especially, he doesn't realize that that gives him a huge edge in the world and that it everything is fun for him, but other people are seeing it through a different lens that isn't so rose-colored. and And so I think it's less about a bad side although he dabbles in that later in the season um less about a bad side and more about needing to realize that if he th- wants to be a good person and he thinks he has this good heart mm-hmm. then he has to act a little differently like he has to make different choices and be more considerate what do you what do you love about buddy um i think he's a very introspective person um, he takes a few shots on the chin throughout the course of the series. And I think for a lot of people, it might, for me even, it might have left them in a different place. And for him instead, he took the shot. He got back on his feet. He thought about why he took it. He thought about if he deserved it, you know. And then from there, he made the decision to keep going and to to change or to stay the same depending on where that introspection left him. I think that's just a beautiful thing. Um, that not everyone has, and I, I struggle to have sometimes as well. well what was your, what was your favorite part of the filming this series? Singing, acting, or uh, dancing? Oh man, all for different reasons, really, truly. But um, the dancing was the thing that maybe I had the most fun on. I I have a song and later in the season that I got to do some some cool dancing in and. Um, got to work with the dancers, which I didn't, my character doesn't interact with the dancers there. We had a whole bunch of dancers in our show, amazing, like world-class dancers. Mm. Um, so I didn't get to interact with them that much, but I had a song later in the season where I got to w- rehearse with them. And that was just so fun. So that. So, so like, you're, you're going to get, you know, the old school fans that are going to tune in. You're also going to get new fans that jump on this and start watching this what do you hope they get out of this and uh uh how would you like describe this show to them i hope they get um i hope they get i hope they have fun i hope Mm. they have fun watching it i think that's the main thing i think it's a fun show and it's funny and it's upbeat and then i think there are some beautiful nuggets of of lessons and and things like that within it. But I think primarily fun. And then I think if they're on the ride for the fun and the comedy and the hearts and the romance of it, I think they'll learn the lessons just naturally along the way. Um, And I think it it tells a lot of lessons about about friendship and about individuality um, that I think are nuggets in there, some gold nuggets. How many episodes did you film? Eight or 10? Film 10. 10 is there a specific episode that you can't wait for people to watch out of the yeah film? i mean for me personally episode seven is the one i can't okay. wait for 
much. It's it takes a different lens in a lot of different episodes where it'll kind of tell the story through the lens of this character, that character. In episode seven, it takes the lens of um the guys in the series. And so that's a lot of buddies big plot lines come to the surface and the T-Birds as well. So I'm very excited about that. If we see a season two, is there a specific cast member that you hope you have more scenes with next time around? <laughs> that you that you didn't get a chance to work with in the first season? Absolutely. I met my my best friend in the world on the on the sh- on the filming of the show. His name is Maximo Salas. He plays Shy Guy, one of the T Birds. Um, we bestie proposed just like two weeks ago, so it's still <laughs> fresh. It's a big deal. Um, and we've already talked about you know in our in our apartments the different plot lines that we want Shy Guy and Buddy to have yeah. <laughs> throughout the course of the second season if if we get there. So yeah. That's awesome. So April 6th, Paramount Plus. Uh, what's next for you now? Any other projects you're allowed to tell us about? We look out yeah. for? Yeah. I mean, I'm currently working on The Outsiders, the musical um, in La Jolla in San Diego, um, which is the, wor- the world premiere of it. And yeah. it's been a wonderful process. We have about a month left. We finish April 6th currently. Um, and that's been, my dad read that book to me growing up. Wow. So it's been a really cool experience to dive back into it with it's been sitting in my subconscious for so long you know it's just a yeah, crazy yeah. experience I mean the show is is really beautiful and is haunting and violent and there's so much heart in it too so that, that's been really cool and then I'm making some music as always I'm always making some type of music yeah. hoping to release um an album at some point over the next wow. year, two years uh yeah it's awesome jason uh how can the listeners and viewers now find you on social media to keep up with you and of course for uh the new show absolutely the main one i'm on is instagram jason.s.schmidt on instagram i'm on tiktok under the same name i'm on spotify under jason schmidt um i think that's it jason this is great i thank you for giving me famous today man everybody looking forward to april 6th thank you so much elias this was wonderful